Welcome to our ADM Lucid automation testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium automation testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium automation project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we will talk about Selenium testing in Docker. So first, what are the advantages? First, I'll give an introduction of Docker and I'll talk about some advantages of using Docker. So first, Docker is a platform designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications using containers. Containers allow developers to package an application and its dependencies into a standardized unit for software development which includes everything you need to run it. So it's code, the runtime environment, the system tools and libraries, and et cetera. And so some advantages of using Docker. First is a consistent testing environment. Docker ensures the consistency across environments by encapsulating the testing setup, dependencies, and configurations within containers. This consistency minimizes issues related to differences between development, staging, and production environments. The next is isolation and reproductivity uh, uh, and the ability to reproduce it. So each test can run within its own isolated container, ensuring that the test environment is uh, reproducible and separate from other te test runs. So this isolation that you have, it prevents interference between tests and enhances uh, the reproducibility. So some other advantages is the scalability of Docker. So using Docker enables easy scaling of test automation by allowing quick deployment of containers. Tests can run in parallel across multiple containers, facilitating faster execution and enabling efficient use of resources. Furthermore, there is easy setup and configuration. So Docker simplifies the setup process for Selenium automation testing with uh, pre-built Docker images containing Selenium and browser configurations. Um, setting up the test environment becomes very straightforward and it reduces the setup time and the complexity. Also, there's resource efficiency. So Docker containers, they have minimal footprint and consume fewer resources compared to uh, virtual machines. And this efficiency uh, allows for running multiple tests simultaneously on a single host without insignificant overhead cost. Uh, and there's also some other advantages such as portability and reusability. So Docker containers, they're portable and they allow the easy transfer of test environments across different machines or cloud services. Uh, this portability enhances the reusability of the testing environment uh, and it makes it convenient for sharing among team members. There's also version control and image management. So Docker provides version control for images, enabling easy rollback to previous versions if needed. It also allows for the creation of custom images, uh, providing flexibility to tailor the testing environment as required. And finally, uh, using Docker allows integration with continuous integration pipelines. So Dockerized Selenium tests integrate well with these continuous integration pipelines. Uh, the con container-based approach allows seamless integration of tests into the build pipeline and automating test execution and enabling faster uh, feedback on the code changes. So those were some advantages of Docker. Uh, I'm sure you can find many more online, uh, but how do we run uh, Docker? So first you have to download and install. So you just follow this link. And you can just download and install and follow the, uh, follow the steps on their website. Uh, once you download uh, and installed Docker, you can go ahead and run these commands. Uh, for the purpose of time, we're not going to run it in this tutorial, but you can pause the video right now uh, before you move on and try to download Docker first. And after you run these Docker pull commands, there's also um, another command you should run called start standalone. And this basically starts your Docker session. So you just, uh, you can run 
uh, this depending on which web browser you want to use it on. So this one is for Chrome, this one's for Firefox, and this one is for Edge. Okay, so now that we have installed Docker, I'm just going to show you how we can uh, start running this. So remember in the previous slides, there was a bunch of commands. I'm just going to use a few of those commands to show you how we can start a standalone and how we can uh, start using Docker uh, right away with our test. So first, let's just check that our Docker is installed. So what you can do is you can use docker dash dash version to check that. And we see here, we've installed Docker version 24.02. So after we do that, another thing we can check is we can use Docker PS to see what kind of processes we have running on Docker already. And we see it's empty. And that makes sense because we haven't added any processes yet. So Let's, let us add a first process. So I'm gonna paste over this code. And basically what this does is it adds a uh, stand, it creates a standalone on Firefox uh, on this port 4446. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. And now when I use Docker PS, it shows us that we've created a standalone for Firefox uh, right here. And that port was 4446. Uh, and so, yeah. So if we go to our uh, Firefox, we refresh, uh, we see that we have a Firefox standalone right here uh, in our, as one of our, uh, as one of our uh, properties in the Selenium grid. So now we can use this standalone. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our IDE and I'm gonna show you this simple class that we have to basically uh, use Docker. So first in this class, I'm just gonna go to the method that uses Firefox. So this home underscore Firefox. And in this method, basically the, the first important thing we do is we create a Firefox uh, options uh, instance, and then we add some arguments to basically just configure the options. After that, we do a remote web driver. So we start this instance driver as remote web driver, and we feed this remote URL Firefox. And this URL we have right here is basically the URL we used uh, right here to um, access that. So everything we do comes here. After that, we've sent in our options and then uh, we have that part. Next, we also use this command called synchronized this and this basically makes it so our web driver, uh, the driver we uh, declare up here <coughs> is synchronized with the driver down here that we use in the method. And essentially what we do is uh, we're testing to see that we're able to go to this URL website and uh, on this website, the title is what we expect it to be and so on. But the important thing is we're doing this through Docker. Okay, so once we have that, uh, that's the class, uh, that's the method in this class we'll be running. Uh, we can go here to our uh, Java Docker class here and this one basically um, shows right here, we're running home underscore Firefox, and it's just very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna run Docker. So we'll give it some time to run, uh, and now it's done running. Uh, once it's done running, we made it so that it creates an extent report in our output folder. And I'm gonna show you what that extent report looks like. And basically in this extent report, we basically went to, um, we basically opened a Docker web driver. We went to the first website that we declared it to go to. And then on that website, we basically checked that we are on that website. And we also checked that the title of the website is what we expected to. And this was all done through Docker, uh, through right here, uh, uh, right here as we see. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to download and install something else called Real VNC Viewer. And basically, this allows us to see what's happening inside Docker on our system. And so you can go ahead and you can click this link. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on their website. Uh, this is what their website is. All you have to do is just download right here and follow the steps for installation. So after you do that, um, first thing you have to do is you have to pull images. And these are some basic Docker commands. So you do Docker pull. Um, this is uh, first it's for debugging. Uh, so actually, 
okay yeah so first you gotta do docker pull selenium hub and next you have to do um, docker pull these other commands for chrome debug and firefox debug and then you uh pull the images for node uh for chrome and firefox as well after you pull the images now you have to start the hub and the nodes and so to do that first you use this command docker network create grid so you create your grid and then you run it using that grid that you just created uh, and um, you see that you're using your hub you're using your grid uh, and so on uh, finally after that you use this command uh, and this basically just um, it just creates your, uh, the configurations for your whole uh, grid system so again uh, when you start your hub and your nodes you can use this command uh, and basically this is docker run and then you have the flag d and then you have your grid um, you have some configurations here and you have your port number and your, your nodes as well and this basically just connects everything together and right here we just have uh, basically the same command and it's just repeated again uh, but this time we're using uh, node firefox debug instead of um, this node that we have here and here we have it for chrome as well and we're using the chrome node debug and yeah okay so now that we have everything installed i just want to show you some things that we can do to see if we have our nodes and our hubs and everything uh, there properly so one command you can use is you can use docker ps and this will basically show you all your images so your nodes for edge your nodes for chrome your nodes for firefox as well as your hubs as well another way you can see what all the images you have is you can go to your docker application and you can go to images right here click it and it'll basically show you everything you have and its status so we have our nodes for chrome nodes for firefox we have our hub as well and we have some other nodes here as well now once you have that and you've seen everything you have you can actually go to um, so for us we have this firefox browser here so your selenium grid and we see that we have our different nodes here so we have our nodes for edge nodes for firefox and nodes for chrome as well so you can check those three things to see and make sure that your environment is set up properly uh, after that i'm going to go to the ide and i'm going to go to the class that we created called youtube.java and in this class we basically have uh, right here test grid uh, and we have here remote string which specifies this url and that was the url that we used to see the selenium grid right here um, and basically in here uh, we create an instance for chrome options we also create an instance for firefox options edge options safari options and uh, we basically set those right there uh, what's different here is in our test right here test one we basically connected our uh, test right here to the grid that we had by using this browser uh, which is this string right here which we eventually feed in uh, this remote URL we use that to connect whatever we're running here uh, with that grid and basically what we're doing in these tests like test one test two and so on is we're basically opening up these YouTube links and we're letting it run for a little bit of time so that's the code then we have a few more tests for that and what we want to do using this code is we want to run this inside in a docker environment uh, in a parallel fashion so what we can do to do that is we can actually create uh recall that we go here we go to edit configurations and we basically we can run the three different uh things we have so let me just open up these for you uh, these are just basically um, classes to run the test of youtube on chrome edge and firefox and we see it calls each test uh, and so on so we can basically run these in parallel by using the uh, uh, the configurations right here. So we go to edit configurations, and this is using the the add-on for um, uh, ID uh, for the ID, ID, ID. And basically, 
uh, multi-run add-on, by the way. Um, and uh, if you don't recall using multi-run, uh, I suggest you go back to our uh, previous video to see uh, more information about multi-run. But yeah, you basically go here, you create your parallel test. So right here, we have these three tests here. And you basically create that, you click OK. Um, and when you're running, you can just run the configuration. So I run all three parallel tests right here. Uh, we'll give it some time to load up right here. And once this is done loading up, we can go back to our grid and we see that these are the three nodes. We'll just go ahead and go to our session and it shows that it's running all three of them at once. And so we can give it some time to run. Okay, so now that we gave it a little bit of time to run, we can actually, we can view each of uh, these nodes because we installed real VNC. So how you do that is all you have to do is you have to go to the session you have here. You can click on that. You can enter the password. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the password and you accept. Uh, and it basically shows you what's happening inside each node. So that one's that. Let me go to this node here. Uh, that one ended because the node just finished running. Uh, we see here, and it basically shows you what's happening inside each node. So it opens up these URLs, it opens up the YouTube site, and it basically runs it, and so on. And so this is a nice way you can run a parallel test inside Docker, as well as see what's actually happening inside your parallel test. Next, I'm going to show you how we can use um, the command docker compose and a .yml file to create all the different nodes and all the different hubs that you need in one command. And so the first requirement to run this is we need a .yml file, which we have right here. In the file that we have here, we have three different blocks of text. The first block creates the hub, and the next two blocks create the node for Chrome and the node for Firefox. Within each block, we have the, the command that we would run uh, in directly in our command line uh, to create either the hub or the node. And we have this all in the YML file. Now, in order to uh, create all of this through one command, we're going to use the docker-compose command. And I have it right here. So docker-compose-f, and then we have our YML file, and then we're going to use up. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and we see that it's creating all the different things that we need. Now, I can show you that this worked by using docker ps, and we see it created the hub that we wanted. And yeah, so with that, we're able to use a YML file to create all the different things that we want. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope this video was a little bit helpful in understanding how Docker works and how you can use it with Selenium. Uh, if you found this video helpful, and if you want to see more videos from us, please like and subscribe, and uh, we hope to see you again. Thank you.